Hey guys, welcome to Doing Things Dan's Way. Uh, today I have my uh, daughter's uh, Toyota Yaris here and we are going to remove and replace the rear uh, shoes on this car. Uh, I have a pretty good feeling that they are shot and we'll see if they've gone too far and actually destroyed the, the drums here. Uh, but let's get started doing that, Doing Things Dan's Way. So my first step here is I'm gonna jack up the car. What I like to do is this little trick here where I actually uh, go to the, the same side that I'm gonna work on and put it up on a ramp. So instead of having the car just up on one support, I like the idea of actually uh, going up on the ramp so that whole front end is really nicely supported by the wheel. And then here, I mean literally, the car is really light because the whole car is kind of being twisted up. And I'll lift this side and I'll put it up on the support. And I just feel like the whole car is just so much uh, better connected because the car is leaning kind of together at the same angle instead of kind of being in a twisting thing uh, sitting on the support twisted. So that's just my own little trick. That's doing things Dan's way. So step one, I'm going to crack these bolts. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use this kitty litter bucket as a way of collecting dust and other things. I've gotten it wet, so it's also going to just collect dust that much better. Um, let's see if this drum is gonna come off. Now, usually these don't come off. You can bang on them. The simple trick is to put a, a bolt in here. Uh, I think this is a quarter 20, and that's gonna let us uh, pop the drum off. Feed in a quarter twenty. Ideally, we have two of these. There it goes. Before I take that all the way off, I'm going to go ahead and back it out. Right. And now this can be full of dust, so I'm going to let the dust drop down in here, where it's going to hit the water and kind of get collected. You don't want to be breathing that stuff. Okay. Well, step one, let's look inside here and see what we have. Nice and smooth. You don't want to touch this if your hands are greasy, and so far they're not greasy. But it's nice and smooth, and it tells me we didn't destroy the rotors by uh, not replacing the brakes soon enough. I mean, the, the drum here. I'm terrible at talking about drum brakes because I just do everything in, in uh, disc these days. So, okay, so yeah, the pad material is still good all the way around. Okay, so the first step here is we're gonna take off these outer rings. It was like a $3 tool, super cheap. And it's designed to grab these. Let's see if it works here. Okay. 
those. So just push in, quarter turn, pops right out. So there's one. Two springs. Okay, this looks like it's moving nicely here. The bearings feel feel good. That removed now this whole thing has come loose so you can get it off of the caliper mechanism and what's holding it on now is the uh, all the springs of course but also the, uh, the emergency brake cable so we'll work this we'll working from this end. Together there. You can see this is the emergency brake half. I fold this over, you can see it needs to come out of this slot here. Okay, so that came in this way and around. out and see how that went together. So now if you're nervous about getting this all back together, uh, what we can do is we can pull out the other set of brake pads and just go ahead and work on it kind of one step at a time. Definitely should have worn gloves. Let's fix that. So what I'm going to do here so I'm going to compare, make sure these things are identical before moving forward. It just confirms I've got the right, all the right stuff here. The shoe was like this, right? And that pin was facing away, which means it matches this one. It does not match this one. So there is a left and a right on the pins. Great. Okay, we'll start on this side. What we have to do here is remove this cotter pin and take this piece off and mount it to the new one. So we're gonna come in here. Just maybe a wider tool would be better. That's off. Just gonna take this guy off. Come right back on where it was. And reseat that cotter. that side. Then we'll go back here. 
And to get that on, we have to retract the spring and hook it on there. Remember that? Now I don't want to fight this. Just come in, put on there. Here it is. Okay. That's right, right? Okay. Now, on this side, I have to take off this guy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that guy comes off too. And while we're here, see all the adjustability in that? Let me clean that off. Break clean. So break clean is pretty powerful stuff. It's kind of uh, messing with these gloves, so not the best gloves. I ran out of my the nitrile blue ones. It'd be a better glove to wear. Okay, so back to this. What you want to do is you want to wind this back down. This is where the new pad material is going to take up the space. So what we're doing here is we're, we're contracting the, uh, the caliper. And you'll notice there's a difference here. So when we put it back together, we need to make sure that this is oriented the proper direction. Back to this guy for a second. You can see on the back side we need to take off these spring and this mechanism and stick it over here. So let's uh it's just it's just hanging on that little hook right there. This just comes right off. Okay, so now that I have a match set, come back here, put this guy on. <coughs> Not that strong. Okay, so. Guy has a little bit of movement. That's his role. Okay, we'll come back to this guy. And one thing I've seen on this, if this guy comes off, realize that that's the that's the shape you're looking for. And what you do want to have You want to have this be nice and slippery, so it's good to put a little bit of grease right there. Because this is the tensioner for your brakes, so. What you notice, see that little notch there? If I put this back together, right? So make sure the notch is on the side that this pins on. So it should look like that. You see the spots where it was touching? Right down here. So I'm gonna put a little bit of grease on those spots. Of course, don't get this on your hands and absolutely don't get it on the on these surfaces. Pin here, line it up, get it 
close. That's much easier than using this because you can see you can see what you're doing, you can see the holes that you're trying to get it into. So yeah, definitely use lock the the vice grips instead of trying to do this because now you can't see whether it's lining up or not. So work great to get it out, but ultimately these work better. I got some fresh gloves because I touched I got grease that oozed out of the thing on me, so Absolutely cannot have grease <laughs> uh, on your fingers. So I've greased these points now. And we can go ahead and reassemble this part. It'll be easier to not have the spring on that side. Let's put the spring on this side first. This side, good to go. Trying to get the notch here in the back and the notch here in the front. And the pin through. Okay, that's, that's close enough. So that all goes together. So I'm have my finger on the back of the, the pin here. Let's go ahead and get the spring back on. Okay. So once you get these two in, now you can fuss this thing around. We can get in here and make sure this guy is where he's supposed to be. Looks like there's a lot of adjustment that needs to happen to re-lengthen this thing. So I'm gonna grab a screwdriver and adjust him back out. New gloves. That's in the slot, that's in the slot. So things to inspect here. This is where it belongs. It's captive, right? This is where it belongs. Notches in front, the notches in back. The adjuster is right up against the teeth. And then the spring down here is behind this little metal plate and connected. And once it's all in there, it really won't go anywhere. You know, like, you can slide it around, 
but it doesn't just fall apart. So you give it a good shake and, and wiggle, and that should all be locked in tight. Down here, it's also inside these two tabs. So in the tabs, behind the spring, these guys are in properly. It should be flush and flush, basically. And that should be everything. So let's go ahead and put the drum on, and let's just see how tight these are. If they're way too tight, you won't even get the drum on. Which looks like it might be. Yeah, so see what's happened is, at this point, it's so, I have this adjuster is too far out, so we've pushed, um, we've pushed the drums too far away. So what I'm doing is I'm rotating this in. bringing the brakes in this way. I should have left this only a couple threads showing when I started. I had it way too far out, so do it the hard way now that I've put it all together. Let's see if the drum will go on now. Okay. Okay, now I have no, no drag at all. Still nothing, no drag. Now we have a little bit of rub happening. I mean, I can, I can still push it with a couple fingers, so it's not, it's not much, but it's just barely touching there. on the ground. Well, there you have it, guys. That's uh, doing it Dan's way. <laughs> I hope you learned something. Uh, I certainly did. Uh, it's uh, kind of an interesting project. This is just a really klutzy process, as you can see. It's just there's so many things you got to kind of get held just right before all kind of snaps together with the last set of springs. So don't let that... Uh, Get you frustrated, just try and try again. Uh, so yeah, be encouraged. You can see these other videos here. Uh, let me know what you think of this video. Please subscribe if you want to see more content like this uh, on the RS, as well as uh, the other cars I have. So until next time, guys, be blessed. <laughs>